Hello, everybody. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. If you'd like to join the live chat tonight, you need to be logged into your Gmail account or your YouTube channel, and that's a YouTube requirement. It's not a Kath requirement. And your YouTube channel is simply what YouTube calls an account. If you don't have either of those, it's no big deal. You can still comment. It will just be in the comments section underneath me here. And I'll do my best to reply to you. But it won't be until after the show and most likely probably not until tomorrow morning sometime. It is Tuesday, the 27th of July, 2021. And this is a YouTube live event. Wow. So before we start, we'll give everyone a time to um, come in because there's always stragglers. That's no big deal either. We can wait a few seconds. How is everybody going? Are you all surviving this wind? Oh, my giddy aunt. And the cold. You're managing with cold. It, it's been freezing and then... This morning, here this morning, was absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. It was warm almost. The sun was shining. I put the washing out on the clothesline. It was just amazing. And while I was out there, I spotted a weed. So I started pulling weeds. And before I knew it, an hour had gone and my fingernails were filthy and the washing was dry and ready to come back in again. And the next load was waiting to go out. So I put that next load out and then spent most of the day chasing it all around the yard. The wind was so strong. Now I've got good pegs, really good pegs, and I use lots of them. I'm not mingy with the pegs on the clothesline, but the sheets, the sheets blew off, pillow slips blew off, a pair of jeans blew off. Oh my goodness, it was ferocious. And I was standing at the kitchen window and that washing was going, it was spinning something fierce but it all got dry <laughs> even if I did have to chase it it was all dry yeah Beverly I think it's been a bit colder this winter I don't know whether it's because it actually has been colder or I'm just a bit older and feeling it more um, anyway so hello everyone yeah if you're in Victoria watch out for the winds I was looking at the um weather map and it's a huge huge big swathe of Victoria that's going to get winds up to I think they said 120 kilometers an hour in the alpine regions now that's nothing compared to what they had in Perth today and yesterday oh my goodness or in western Australia today and yesterday so I think we've had weather events across the whole of the country this last week okay now I called tonight's show. <laughs> I called tonight's show stockpiling the little things and the unusual things, those weird and wonderful things that we don't use every day. And I did that deliberately because, well, seriously, we have things in our homes that we only use occasionally. And we might not have spares of them. So I was thinking about it um, during the week. And I thought, oh, you know, I really should have a spare one of those just as a backup, not necessarily um, a stockpile of it, but as a backup. And it was a simple, really simple thing that probably most of us use in some form or other in our homes. And it was just a simple wooden spoon just a wooden spoon but when when you need it it's one of those things that when you need it you need it now it could be a wooden spoon or it could be a melamine spoon or it could be a silicon spoon or it could be a metal spoon but when you need it you need it the wooden spoon I had broke so I needed a new one but I didn't have one as a backup now wooden spoons are really cheap there you know, very inexpensive, even supermarket, $2 shops, department stores, kitchen stores, 
all have wooden spoons of varying prices. So it's not an expensive thing to have a spare of in the kitchen drawer. I'm just going to have a sip of tea because I'm getting hoarse. <clears throat> so um, that prompted me to think about other things that I don't use all the time, but when I need it, I need it. So I've made a list and we'll go through them. Feel free to pop your um, things that you think of in the comments because even if I don't use it, someone else might and it might just trigger a memory that we have to add it to our shopping list so we have a spare. All righty now. Um, where else are we? I've lost my notes. Sorry, guys. Click the wrong button. All right. Because I know we talk about pantries and building pantries often. It's one of my favourite subjects. It's one of my favourite topics and it's one of my favourite things to do. My pantry is my security blanket. So I like to keep it. I like to keep it close. I like to keep it full. And while we do talk a lot about food and toiletries and cleaning supplies and, you know, even some garden supplies and tools, all those categories can still often be missing something, can be missing those things that we don't use very often. But again, when we need them, we really need them. So things like matches. Now, in our home, matches aren't really needed very often at all. The cooktop is gas and it has um, electronic ignition. So does the hot water service and the central heating. Central heater, do the wacky, what's it that's outside? They all have electronic ignition. So we don't need matches to light them. Even our barbecue has electronic ignition. We don't need a match to light it either. The only thing I could think of in our home that needs to be lit with a match is the fire. And as we pretty much keep it going all winter, it really only needs to be lit once. But that once, if we don't have a match, is really hard to do. And then if the power goes out, I need a match to light the gas on the stove, to relight the hot water, to relight the gas ducted heating. Um, starting a fire without matches, it's certainly doable. But I'll fess up and say that years and years and years of camping experience, I am still hopeless with a flint to start a fire. Never, ever succeeded yet. And we do have a flint, at least with our camping gear. So we need matches or a gas lighter, you know. Even if you never think you'll need them, they are one of those things that when you need it, you really need it. It's as simple as that. So something else that um, I thought of that you don't need until you do is pest control. Now, I know that, um, you know, some of us like to have... Um, more natural pest control, and that's fine. I have nothing against that at all. But this last few months, we've seen parts of Australia infested with a mice plague. So you would need mouse baits, mouse traps, um, rat traps, those sorts of things, wasp traps, um, cup of tea time again. You know, it's no secret that we're on the downside of that mouse plague. Thank goodness winter came with the cold weather and slowed them down. I can cope with a little field mouse. No, I said a. I don't cope with more than one ever. I think mice and rats are dirty and they're destructive. They eat your food. They chew through wires. They'll chew through the walls of your house. They'll chew through your furniture and your clothes. They're disgusting. And they spread disease. So if you don't have them, even if you think you may never need them, 
some mice and rat traps and baits in your um, garden shed or in your pantry, your laundry pantry, might be worth investing in. Now, personally, I like those throwdown packs and I have them in the attic, in the roof space, um, under the furniture that doesn't get moved very often, behind the fridge, in the garden shed, in the garage, all over the place. I have them between the um, stacking boxes in my shed. And yes, between the boxes, because oh, mice, if you've ever had to deal with them, mice are incredibly flexible. Yeah. I think that's the word I want. They can get into and out of the tightest of spots. So don't think between the stacking boxes is a dumb place to put it. It's not. Now, the other thing we have that I don't really like is ants. So ant sand or something to actually keep them at bay is also an essential in our stockpile. You can try the um, drawing the line with talc. You can try all sorts of things. But you really, really need to get something that they're going to take back to the nest to kill the nest. Otherwise, you're just going to fight with them every day. One more thing, and I'll get off pest control, I think, is we have bush at the back of us. Not a lot of bush, but there's bush there. And there are wasps in that bush. So every now and then, especially when the garden's in bloom, we have wasps. So I have to say, I don't really like those European wasps. They're a bit nasty. So I have no um, remorse if I can swat one. I usually miss them. But if I can spray them and get them to take it back to the nest and hopefully kill off the nest, perfect. I'm happy to do that. Now, wasp stings are awful. And if you are even slightly... Um, sensitive to them they can be really really painful and make you really really sick so maybe this will be my last thing on pest control as soon as I clear my throat sorry guys uh, but personal bug spray remember the old um Aerogard ads you know have a good weekend well I'm not a fan of Aerogard in fact we don't use Aerogard what we do use is Bushman's. It's my personal bug control of um, preference. It's deep based and I just get the 40% one in the yellow and red can or the yellow and red tube. The tubes are better, but the can's easier to apply if you're in a hurry. It's up to you. Now, it's not, it's not cheap, but it does last a long time. And the best part about that is personal insecticides with DEET in them are safe, but they don't go off. So if it's a year old, two years old, five years old, it will still work because there's nothing worse than being attacked by flies or mozzies or sand flies. And I think this stuff is worth its weight in gold. You can try other more natural insect repellents, personal insect repellents. If that's what you want to do, go right ahead. But just find one that actually works, that you've used, that you've proved, and then make sure you have a backup in your pantry stockpile. It's a simple thing to do. It's a bit like keeping a backup of um, sunscreen. But sunscreen does go off. So don't keep too much in, um, in reserve. Now, one of the other things, of course, my mind wanders. You know it does. So that had me thinking, I don't know why, straw brooms. Now, a good straw broom or a good stiff broom is really useful for cleaning carpets and mats, for sweeping paths and things, of course. But, it, you know, if the power goes out and you can't vacuum, what are you going to clean your carpet with? Now, if you have a home that's all tile or all floorboards, that's fine. You've got mats. You can take them outside and shake them and beat them, and that works too. 
But if you have carpets on the floor, you need something to be able to clean them. A good old-fashioned straw broom. If you can find one, they are still available. They are probably, obviously, a little more expensive than the regular kitchen soft floor brooms. But worth it, again, worth its weight gold. You know, and if bush comes to shove and you need it, you need it. Um, now, sorry, I'm thinking carpets, carpet sweepers. Um, remember the old fashioned carpet sweeper? It had the box on it and the handle, and you just pushed it along. They were brilliant. Um, brilliant for cleaning the top layer of fluff and stuff off carpets. They didn't actually get down into the pile. That's where your straw broom comes in really handy. All right, now, oh, now I just saw, sorry, it's jump. this thing jumps on me as soon as I see it. Uh, up, up, up. <laughs> sorry, it was Beverly said she has a wonderful mouse and rat control system. They're called Miss Muffet and Max, in which case, a few extra cans of um, food for them and litter for them won't go astray. Most of us, if we have pets, we usually include, you know, their food and needs in our stockpile anyway. Um, so, and okay, here we go. So I have rat mouse baits, cockroach bombs, ant sand and rat traps. Now, we don't have cockroaches in... Melbourne like you have in Sydney cockroaches in Sydney are just <laughs> everywhere you just can't cannot um, get away from them they even in new homes they're everywhere cockroaches so I never thought of cockroach bombs but yes or baits for them that you can put down works really well and Paula says Reference books for good down so that if Google's not available, you have some books to refer to when needed. Books or um, if you have good online information, you can bookmark it, of course, to save it, but also print it out and put it in a ring binder or a, um, a folder so that you can access it all the time. All right, now, Maureen. Has been bagging up 21, 21 and a half kilos of chicken breast fillets today. Well done. That will last you a while. It's like us last week with our 24 kilos. Yep. Filled the freezer. Actually filled Hannah's freezer. Okay. Yeah, Evelyn, sunscreen does go off. There will be a date on it um, on the container somewhere that will tell you. And it is... If I, it is a use by not a best before on most of them but yeah it it's it starts to lose its effectiveness over time so while you can put it on and it might offer some protection to you it won't offer if it's a you know 50 plus it won't offer that 50 plus protection and you could still get quite a severe sunburn so do check your um sunscreen Maureen keeps candles in the freezer yes and she's got a carpet sweeper too yeah keeping candles in the freezer is a really good idea if you have the freezer room guys because they burn much longer if they're cold um only if you have the freezer room if you don't have the freezer room it doesn't really matter don't keep your matches in the freezer and on that note, you can get waterproof matches, but you'll usually get them from a camping store. Um, Anaconda, BCF, Kathmandu, um, is that still around? Somewhere like that. Um, um, yeah, a camping store will sell you waterproof matches. I know Big W used to sell them, but I don't think they do anymore. They're not very expensive. Um, And this, yes, 
is was on my list actually <laughs> spare glasses or um even if they're not your regular prescription glasses the ones you can buy from the chemist or department store or whatever if it's if you can get them close enough to your prescription they're two four five dollars a pair or something they're great in emergencies really good in emergencies because i can tell you that if i was to actually smash my glasses and not have lenses i would be blind blind as blind i can't see more than about four feet in front of me i am my eyes are that bad so you know if the if i break the leg off then i'd be like um dr chan and you know a bit skew with but i would persevere but if i smash the lenses i'd be really 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 in trouble so i actually um when i get new glasses i keep the old pair as a spare set and then when the new ones become the old ones the old ones get donated um, yes joy straw broom and damp tea leaves do a brilliant job of cleaning carpets and i know it sounds weird but it leaves the nicest smell in the house really really nice now delaney Delaney has two carpet sweepers. One's orange and peacock blue. Carpet sweepers of the 70s. Um, Patricia's cats like um, uh, cockroaches. Good. Yeah, Kerry, waterproof matches are hard to light. There's a reason for that. It's because they're coated in the stuff to make them waterproof. Um, but if you've ever tried to light a wet match, waterproof are much better. Yes, I keep my last pair of prescription glasses too. And then when the next one comes on, I just recycle them, pass them on. Um, Uh, Michelle says, don't throw out your out-of-date sunscreen. Use it as a moisturiser. I haven't tried that. I don't have out-of-date sunscreen, though, so because I don't buy. Um, when the kids were little, I used to get it in the big pump packs from Cancer Council, big pump packs. Now I just get the normal bottle, um, and we try to hats, long sleeves, stay out of the sun as much as we can um, all right okay and it yeah look i don't know um i don't know why i started doing it oh i do actually because about 23 years ago 22 years ago 23 years ago I broke my glasses which wouldn't have been so bad except that I actually had to go and um, I was actually on my way walking out the door to go and um, go to a meeting which wouldn't have been so bad except that it was sort of rather an important meeting and I couldn't put it off and so I talked a friend into driving me and guiding me into the building because I really could not see and took it from there and then she drove me from there straight to the um, optometrist to try and get them fixed but I'd really broken them so did a good job on them that day so yeah ever since then I keep them now I do the same with my sunglasses um, I have the old pair and the current pair and when we go away I always take the spares with me when we go away especially if we're going camping <sighs> hey, camping is is hard <laughs> it's rough on things so you never know uh, 
Uh, yes. All righty. Now, back to my notes, guys. Another thing, something to sharpen your knives and scissors with. So it could be a stone or a steel. It could even just be a $2 knife sharpener from the um, dollar shop or Kmart or whatever. As long as you've got something to sharpen your knives with. Blunt knives are dangerous, guys. Trying to cut things with blunt knives is when you lose fingers and it's not good. So you need something to sharpen your knives with. Now, I have somewhere um, a steel, which is just, it's on a wooden handle and it's just a tapered round piece of steel that's sort of like a round raspy thing. It's quite rough. That was my grandfather's. So he used it because he was a butcher. My dad used it. Um, mum knew how to use it I sort of know how to use it but I'm not that good at it but practice makes perfect so I could become better if I needed to but something to sharpen your knives with again it's one of those things that you don't think you need until you do now I know I have um, Wiltshire knives in my kitchen and they, of course, are self-sharpening because you slide them in and pull them out. But that little thing in there wears out. So you do have to replace that over time. But if I couldn't replace it, being able to keep those knives sharp would be really important. Um, simply because sharp knives, you know, blunt knives are dangerous, sharp knives work better. But in a... Um, what is it, the end of the world as we know it type scenario, um, being able to have our knife sharp to um, peel veggies, chop things, even um, cut sticks and things is really important. But that's not why you need one. It's just because sharp knife, blunt knives are dangerous and you really should have sharp knives. Now. Yeah. Manual can opener. Good idea, Delaney. Um, I don't have an electric one, so. Um, spare gas bottles, a jerry can of petrol. Yes. And a generator. Yes. Um, now, I have a can opener. It's a really, really good one. Um, the boys bought me, it's German, and it was expensive. It was about $40, $45 or something. They bought it for me for Christmas years and years ago. It is brilliant. And it's really easy to use if you've got um, arthritis or whatever, which is why they bought it for me. And it goes, it's left-handed or right-handed. So how's that? That works really well. Um Okay, now back to the notes. The humble cotton bud. Seriously, really useful, not just for, you know, makeup or whatever, but a cotton bud for dabbing things and getting things in places. And then there were things like um, elastic. Seriously, who remembers? Um, last year, you could not get elastic for love nor money. It was just impossible to get with everyone making masks and panicking and whatever. Elastic. Seriously, if the elastic goes in your tracky dacks, you don't want to have to be walking around holding them up. Elastic. Which leads me to sewing needles and thread. Even if you're not a sewer. A packet of sewing needles and a reel of white cotton and a reel of black cotton will get you through most things, most small mending jobs, if you need to do them. Um, buttons, we all keep a button jar, I'm sure. So buttons, buttons are really expensive to buy, so keep them, don't throw them out. 
all those sorts of things are things that you don't don't really think about needing until you do need them the other thing is light globes light bulbs now if you've switched over to the um leds like we have in the kitchen they're supposed to last for thousands of hours well time will tell but when it goes it goes you need to have a backup a spare of it at least one um, they don't go off and if you store them somewhere safe where they're not going to get jostled around or whatever they won't break and when you when it goes you'll be able to replace it and replace it easily so light bulbs are good to have on hand buckets now I've, I have my soaker bucket and I have the um, floor bucket but buckets buckets are so handy to have for all sorts of things for carrying water for carrying dirt for using as a toilet if you need to for flushing toilets if you need to um, for bathing babies <laughs> we, we used to bath the kids in the um, nappy bucket when we go camping so all sorts of things buckets are handy for for using them as a basket to carry stuff if you need to buckets now buckets are really cheap they have very inexpensive about 79 cents I think at Bunnings really really inexpensive for a 10 litre plastic bucket um, but you don't have to buy them buckets are all over the place so they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes so you can often pick them up for absolutely nothing if you just keep keep your eye open and keep it at the front of your mind that you're you need some buckets if you can get a bucket with a lid even better because lids mean that whatever goes in it stays in it and that really helps too all right now there we go bale of twine <laughs> bale of twine in the in the pocket yep why not there we go Karen came up with a good one veggie peelers now I true if you don't um if you don't have it you've got to use a knife and if you're not used to peeling your veggies with a knife and your knife isn't sharp you've got a real problem so veggie peelers are actually really handy now I bought a packet of five I think it was from Aldi for a couple of dollars you know, a while back I'm still on the first one so they last a while but yeah when it goes it goes and you need to have that spare one ready and waiting as a backup um, oh, there's something going on with this do the wacky Watson I can't read it okay uh, right Beverly big tub of not too expensive skin moisturizer for hands and faces in the winter months to avoid wind burn yes and if you don't have that you can use olive oil you can use ordinary vegetable oil you can use coconut oil um, if you want to I don't mind the coconut oil did you know that you can actually whip coconut oil because you know it's solid at room temperature so if you scoop some out and put it into a a mixer bowl and use the um, beater attachment on your mixer to whip it it whips up like cream like whipped cream it will double triple in size and become really light and fluffy and it's really nice to use and it makes a great moisturizer straight as it is you don't need to add anything to it but you can add some vitamin E if you want to some vitamin E oil if you want to if you want to add um, some essential oils be very careful with what you add and how much you add in case you're sensitive to them but you can but I like it just straight just straight whipped coconut um, coconut oil whip it up into a um, a fluff and it's really good it's great for nails and it's really good for elbows and knees and feet and ankles so yeah the coconut oil see it's not just for cooking um, batteries thank you yes uh, uh, little screwdrivers in the battery box okay uh, three kilo 
yeah, Joy bought there you go. See buckets are everywhere. Joy got a big a big thing of yogurt came in a bucket. Buckets are everywhere, absolutely everywhere. You don't need to buy them. Um, lip balms, yes, but the same deal. If you want to use your whipped coconut um, coconut oil, you can use that as a lip balm. Um, you're welcome, Beverly. It's real. You don't need a lot. Um, in fact, don't make up a whole lot of it. If Beverly's talking about the um, whipped coconut oil. Don't whip up a whole lot of it because you, once you've taken it out of the jar, it's contaminated. So just do, I do probably half a cup at a time and I keep it in a clean jar and just, I put it, I do it at night time before I go to bed. It goes on my feet and then my socks go on and on my um, around my nails and things for my hands. It's really, really good. Um, really effective. And I find if I do it at night, it's not, you don't have the coconut smell during the day. So it's pretty easy to do. Vitamins, painkillers. Now, there you go. Um, we don't do so much with the vitamins, but your analgesics. So, and again, we don't use a lot of those either in this house. But when someone has a headache, they have a headache. And I know with my crew, if it's bad enough for them to come and say, can I have Panadol, it, it's bad. They don't, um, it, it's not just a, oh, I've got a headache. It's a really bad headache. So um, trying to have a couple of backup packets of those is handy to have on hand too. I just keep them in the first aid box. And... Now I've got the hiccups. Here we go again. Sorry, guys. And then um, it's in the first aid box along with the bandages and other things so that um, at the end of the year when I do the stock take of the first aid box, I can make a note of what needs to be um, used, what's almost out of date. I don't use... Um, Panadol, ibuprofen, or paracetamol, ibuprofen, um, aspirin, anything like that that's out of date. I don't use for people use. So um, I keep an eye on it. See, I'm not alone. Maureen does it too. Coconut oil and, and fuzzy socks. There's, there's no nicer way to go to bed in winter. Perfect. And in winter, I know it sounds weird, but in winter our skin is so much drier. So we need to um, need to look after it. Coconut oil. Hmm, okay, I'll clarify. is not the cheapest moisturiser you will get. But if you have it and you're not using it for cooking or baking, then put it to good use as a, as a moisturiser. Um, if you want, if you just want a moisturizer, there are cheaper alternatives out there. Yeah. So, okay, what else? What else did I have on my list? Um, oh, citronella, um, citronella, um, oil, citronella candles, um, whatever for outdoor pest, um, pest control. Um, it's sort of, it's another one of those things that you don't really think about needing until you need it. We keep some in our camping box so that when we're away, because of course everybody knows that if your campfire is smoky, you don't have flies and mosquitoes, but then what's the fun of sitting in a smoky campfire? So we have some for when we're away, but at home, outside, citronella. It's inexpensive, guys. It it lasts citron a thing of citronella oil in a little burner will last for hours and hours and hours. So it's worth keeping an eye on too. And Annabelle says nail files. Yes, sticky tape. We've said cotton buds. Um, yep, fixed, rubbed into feet, and then socks, yes. Um, they all work, all those sorts of things. Um, on the sticky tape, mentioning sticky tape, scissors, a spare pair of scissors somewhere where you will know, you will know where to get your hand on them if you need to. Um, 
Um, now, Joy. Joy said, the last 12 months she's bought scripts on the date on the repeat, which is usually about three weeks, and now she has a month in advance, which is really handy. You can sometimes ask your doctor, or you can ask your doctor, and sometimes he or she will allow it for you to get your scripts ahead, but you can't do it all the time. So... You usually need a reason for it. Like I know when we go away, because we go bush and there just isn't a chemist, you know, around the corner, um, it might be, you know, five or six hour drive to the nearest chemist if we're lucky, then Wayne gets his scripts ahead of time and we get them filled ahead of time. Now, you can ask to do that, but they won't do it without a really good reason. Um, so Annabelle's gone a kit to fix eyeglasses with the tiny screws and tiny screwdrivers you can get those they're called jewelers tool kits and they come with little tiny screwdrivers and they're flat they've got phillips heads they've got all sorts of things and the teeny tiniest little screws in them now you can go really up market with those and they can be really really expensive or you can just go to the two dollar shop seriously if your glasses break Who's going to care whether you paid $30 for the toolkit to fix it or $3? It's not going to matter. So it's one of those things where hmm, you don't need it until you do. So it doesn't need to be really expensive. Um, good, yeah. See, Beverly has scissors. Good. Glad it's not mean. Jane, Tim Tam, seriously? You don't need them until you know you need them. Yeah, probably. Um, so Karen gets her husband's scripts three months in advance. Yes. Um, Good question, Delaney. How does Jane manage to stockpile Tim Tams? Ah, they wouldn't last in this house. I have to tell you, okay, I fess up here. I can't remember whether I've told you this or not, honestly. Brain like a sieve some days. A few weeks ago when Hannah was here and we were cooking dinner and fooling around and she mentioned to me that she, oh, I need a spaghetti container. I have one of those long tall spaghetti containers and she said I need a spaghetti container thanks mum and I oh, it's mine it's mine and I went and hid it I have no idea where I put it I can't find the spaghetti container I totally forgot where I put in it so one day I will be doing something crazy and find the spaghetti container so you have to remember not to hide things, as I say, because you could hide the um, Tim Tams, freeze them. Oh, the Kerry frozen Tim Tams are frozen Tim Tams are perfect because they don't. The whole thing doesn't melt when you dip it. Um, yeah, the hidden emergency treat stash. Um, okay, alrighty. So that was just a few things that I thought they're all sorts of things that we don't need until we actually do need them. But they're things that we should have at least a backup of. So we've got one in rotation in our house, wherever it is, and one in our pantry waiting to be used. We don't need, you know, half a dozen straw brooms. A spare one will do. Um, and I know that sounds weird because someone's going to say, well, straw brooms last for a long time. Yeah, they do generally. But when it goes, it goes, you know. Now, on that note, broom handles. Broom handles, uh, spare handles are pretty um, handy to have too. We've gone through not just for brooms but for our garden rakes. Um, I do not know what I, I don't know my own strength when I'm raking. 
I think three this year we've managed to or I've managed to snap off. So Wayne did fix one a couple of times. So it went from being a nice big tall <laughs> ray candle to like it would be short on a two-year-old. <laughs> So we did actually have to give in and get a new handle for that one. But, but yeah, things like that, you need to think, think about these things because our pantry isn't just our food. It's not just our cleaning supplies. It's not just our toiletries. It's not just the stuff we use every day. Our pantry really is everything we use full stop. So. Have a think about it. See where your gaps are. See what you can do to fill them in and plug them up. Um, oh, lock on the freezer. <laughs> Mop heads, yeah. Exactly. And a lot of these things, like mop heads, for example, or the handle on the rake or the broom, a lot of these things can be repaired but not repaired quickly and easily especially if you're in the middle of mopping or in the middle of sweeping or the middle of raking. If you have to stop and go away and drill out the broken bit, and smooth off the end, and put it back in and screw it back in, it can, take, it can take a bit of time. So you need to just think about these things. They're not, um, I don't think any of the things we've mentioned have been very expensive and pretty much, you know, apart from matches and light globes and stuff like that, you'll pick up, um, you can pick them up at garage sales when we're allowed to have them again. Op shops, things like they don't have to be new either. So they're not going to add to your expense, um, but they'll certainly make life easier if you've got the backup handy when you need it. joy that's like the um the old farmer who's um had you know the axe was his grandfather's and it's only had seven new axe heads and 14 handles yeah yeah yes so, all right garden gloves oh that's another one kathleen that's a good one garden gloves yep Spares and spare rubber gloves, and rubber gloves are pretty cheap, though they don't necessarily have to be. Some of them are quite expensive. Um, battery radios, yeah, all that sort of thing. And Joy, uh, sorry, Jane, has finished the night off with, and when all else, else fails, have your stockpiled Tim Tams and a cuppa. On that note, I will leave you. I'll let you go early tonight because we went late last week. I'm about to lose my voice. I don't know whether it's the wind or what it is, but it's been a bit croaky today. So thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed tonight's show, please give us a thumbs up. It really, I don't know, it just helps our YouTube, whatever it is that they do, work their magic, really helps our rankings or whatever. Um Thank you for commenting, commenting and thank you for joining me tonight. I should be back next Tuesday. All being well, if you're still in lockdown, we're thinking of you. We're out of lockdown at midnight tonight. Yes, South Australia's out. Yes. So hopefully very soon we'll all be free again to do whatever it is we do best. Okay, thanks for joining us, everyone, and I'll see you next week.